part in the recordings, and that means you can do shit all to stop me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right, here goes. Three, two, one. There are various meats available to the housewife, ranging from the most tender, most expensive cuts to the equally nutritious but less tender portions of the animal, which are sometimes ground or chopped. Harry Astra. The Morning Stream. A little dabble, do ya? Hello, everybody. Welcome back to TMS or to it for the first time. This is Thursday, May 22nd. Sorry, 21st, 2020. I'm Scott Johnson with Brian Hibbett. Yes. Hello, Scott. Just put an H on there. Just go down to the courthouse, pay Brian the 100 bucks. Hibbett. Well, if I'm going to do that, I might as well make it Hibbert. Hibbert. Oh, yeah. Just going to go the full, go the full. Uh... <laughs> Never go full Hibbert, they always say. <laughs> Never go full Hibbert. No. Uh, welcome to the show, everybody. It's uh, Thursday, and um, we got a show to do. We're going to hang out with you here in the morning. Those who are here live, that's we right. appreciate seeing you as always. Those who are at home, uh, that's totally fine, too. In fact, this show was originally designed almost entirely for you people at home, and you're still the prominent uh, audience. 95% of you listen at home. So don't think we're only thinking of the live people. We like you, too. That's right. Yeah. Well, the live people are probably listening at home, too. You know, that's a good point. Now you're all listening at home. Yeah. <laughs> we're all listening yeah. at home. Everybody's at home today. except Delayed some, listening. Delayed some, listening. Somebody somewhere is working. And I'm, for them, I say, good on you, and I hope everything's okay. Yes. All right. Uh, Brian, let's get to yes, it. Yes, sir. Uh, okay. I, well, I was up too late last night, and I'm very tired. And here are the reasons. Well, here is the reason. After Core last night, a video game I do here on the Frog Pants Network with John Jagger and Bo Schwartz, all about video you podcast games. Podcast you do? Yeah, podcast. What did I say? I say something. A video game. A video game that I do every. <laughs> oh, jeez. That's how tired I am. <laughs> it's a video game about podcasting. Yeah, it is a show. It is a podcast. Uh, we do it about video games, kind of the bigger industry stuff, bigger issue stuff. It's uh, that's what sort of separates it from the Boop Show. It's just. Boop shows a little more like, hey, small indie game. Check out this fifteen dollars thing I found on Steam or whatever. And this other show's like, whoa, what is Sony and Microsoft doing? And you know, kind of the bigger, mm -hmm. the bigger sweeping things. Anyway, okay. if you haven't heard that show, you should check it out. It's at frogpants.com/core. Uh, but anyway, after that, me and John and Bo played a little three-man uh, Deep Rock Galactic, which is. I don't know if I've explained this game very well to you before, Brian, but I'll give you the quickie, uh, the quick in introduction, okay? Please, yeah, because I heard you and you and uh, Brian just brushed over it yesterday when you were talking about it, and now I want to know more. Yes, it's Press here if you'd like to know more. It's easy to rave about. So it was in it was in early access for a year and a half or something close to that. During that time, it was uh, highly regarded, even early, and was getting just rave reviews and they were very attentive and putting updates all the time. It was like a really, it was like a model example of how you should do early access, I think. Okay. Um, anyway, I got in early and would check back in here and there, but it finally hit full release, hit 1.0 and came out like for real. And so we thought, well, let's see if this, you know, worked out. Let's give it a shot. And boy, howdy, is that thing amazing and addicting. So here are the, here are the qualities. All right. Okay. Uh, the whole idea is, okay, you know, you know, fantasy dwarves, you know what they are, right? Sure, Little Scottish sure. guys that are just all pissed off and mining stuff all the time. And, you know, mm -hmm. dwarves and fantasy, they're all like, you know, yeah, mines of Moria and all that business. Small, angry with usually large beards. Yeah. Big beards is a, is a key. And uh, anyway, imagine taking that archetype and then moving it into the far flung, dirty space future where okay. they run a giant orbiting platform that does nothing every day but send big giant drills down to a planet where you go and mine the minerals down there and fend off any creatures that attack you while you're doing so and then take all those minerals back up again and sell those minerals and then get cooler stuff and better weapons and then go back down and do it again so it's that game very repeatable levels are randomly generated so nothing's ever the same in there uh you are constantly going, hey, boys, we're going to get all the stuff we need in here. To, you know, like this, this stupid, loud, dwarfy thing. But yeah, you're, but yeah. it's almost like a little bit of um, a little bit of Left for Dead, except these aren't zombies. So you get a wave of these like creatures coming out of the walls and you got to like take them all down or else you're going to die. And you all have got different guns and you got different like 
uh, weird weapons and ways to traverse around. You each have a pickaxe, so you're cutting through walls to get to places. It's very cool, and it's so and you're much always fun. Playing, like, it, it, it's not like you choose whether you're playing the dwarves or you're playing the, the, the invaders or whatever it is that's coming to train. Yeah, you don't do any of that. It's purely co-op. It's all so cooperative. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Fully co-op, cool. and you're always a dwarf, and you're always... And you have classes. You have an engineer, a gunner. I forgot the name of the other one. Oh, a scout. He's a little spry guy with a with a grappling hook, and a, and then who's the other one? There's another one. Oh, John plays him, the driller, and the driller's this guy with these two giant titanium drills as one of his weapons, but it mm -hmm. also works as a drill. So if you want to get oh. deep into a big giant slab, you can just oh, wow. <laughs> like big thing. rocky, uh, gnarled. Uh, yeah, okay, with big like cool. titanium knobs on it, like twisting and stuff. It's very cool. Anyway. The game is stupid fun, and we just had a blast in there, so I was up way too late, but it's so much fun. If you've got three friends, or even if you play it solo, it's fun. It's just a very, very cool game, and uh, the Steam reviews are like off the charts, like overwhelmingly positive in all categories, and damn, it's fun. It's so fun. Oh my gosh. We played that. I would, I could have kept doing it, but I knew if I didn't get out of there, <laughs> TMS was in jeopardy. Next thing would be two in the morning, you're like, okay, uh, great. Uh yeah. Like, Bo, yeah. he does this thing where he'll play, like, till 4, but he has to be at work at 7, and he'll do it. I can't do that. Mm -hmm. I, I, don't know if I, I don't know if I ever could do that. I think I could, I could stay up pretty late and play Street Fighter back in the day until, you know, pretty late in the night, but I knew I was going to sleep in the next day. I couldn't do this whole, like, till 4 and then work at 7. No. Are you kidding? No, no way. Yeah. Oh, my Lord. So, anyway. No, we did, uh, we did Raid last night and beat our heads against uh, Nazoth a bunch of times. Oh, and that no. is a... So, I mean, he is basically the end boss of this expansion. Right. He is. And uh, not even basically. He is. He's the end boss of this expansion. There's no no sugarcoat it. And um, it is a, it is such a precise dance that if even one thing goes wrong, you've kind of got to bail and wipe and start over. Like, you, it's, yeah. it's almost like a, you know... You've got to have everything. It's like it's like uh, uh, Phil Connors' Groundhog Day. Near the end of all of his Groundhog Day stuff, when he was figuring out how to <laughs> how to run and catch the kid who falls out of the tree, yeah. go and play Jeopardy with the old people. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Talk to rob him. the bank, yeah. uh, <laughs> rob the the armored car. <laughs> Wait, wave at uh, Ned, whatever his name was. I sure as heck fire Dang remember again. you. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> Ned Ryerson. Oh, I love that movie. Anyway. I gotta watch that movie. So anyway, it it's like it's it's uh, very very precise, and we haven't been able to complete it yet. But we did get we have phase one on farm. Mm. <laughs> We're working, we have phase two almost pretty much down. But man, it is uh, it's a cool fight. There's a, so much stuff going yeah, on. Yeah, I've but. seen the fight, and by the way, don't be too don't be too disappointed in how it all ends. Like right now, the the the, the fun in that fight is the fight. How it all ends is kind of a bummer. Like the yeah. the cinematic the, and the, the story the, bits are dumb. They're bad. Gotcha. Kind okay. of the worst, yeah. of, the worst of this expansion. <laughs> I actually never really put a lot of stock into those. I love seeing them. I love like the, the mm. technical beauty of them. Right. But I never. I'm not a lore guy, so it's like, oh, the, the, the blonde guy is kind of angry at the. The, the blonde the, guy's the, angry. The, the, <laughs> he's angry at the uh, the undead guy, and oh, the un and the. <laughs> <laughs> the blood elf ladies all oh man that's funny i don't know what's going on in this when do i hit something i'd like to announce we're hiring brian to do a lore segment on the instance every week <laughs> where he can uh first week uh, we're gonna talk about the blonde guy being mad at the undead guy. Angry blonde guy oh no now he's a dead blonde guy but he's still walking around he's got a nice sword <laughs> oh i love that blonde guy <laughs> Well, I, I smell a few titles coming. Oh, there's already one now. Someone's going to make yeah. a title based on that. Very well done. All right. Anyway, so whether you're playing World of Warcraft or Deep Rock Galactic or any myriad of video games that are out there, do so safely and don't stay up too late. Okay. Maybe responsibly. No one told me about uh -huh. Tales from the Loop. I didn't know. This. I didn't know about Tales from the Loop. So I didn't, I didn't know this existed. So, so you're about to be. Don't. You're like me. You're going about to learn. What's up? I'm about to learn. Mm -hmm. So Amazon Prime, it's an original there. All right. Now, I forgot yeah. the artist's name, but do you know this? You've seen this guy's work where it looks like a really pretty, uh, maybe a winter scene with a lake and some trees or something. But in the background is a giant robot mech thing or, mm. 
uh, sometimes, and it's, you don't notice it until you're kind of really looking at the painting. Yeah, or sometimes of, you do. Sometimes you, sometimes you see it more obviously. Simon or whatever. Stalinhog. That's, would that be that's his name? The guy, Simon Stalinhog. Uh, if you look at his paintings, and you should, his work okay. is amazing. They, those, his paintings apparently inspired this entire show called really? Tales from the okay. Loop. And it's clear the minute you start watching, you're like, oh, okay, I can totally see it because they're the stuff they do in there is like ripped right out of his paintings oh yeah um, like those giant okay giant mechs in the background and stuff it's so rad he's so cool the stuff he does i follow him on twitter as well and i didn't know i, I follow him on twitter i didn't he doesn't promote it very well because i didn't know about this this tales from the loop business so it's a show on amazon that's like kind of um uh what's the word i'm looking for kind of twilight zoney Okay. Is the idea, I guess, but I'm only in the first episode, and I'm just so, so excited about it. I had to talk about it. I can't even save this. Not for Twilight Zone, that it's anthology kind of stuff, but it is a. Well, maybe well, it is. You don't know. You've only watched one episode. <laughs> yeah, maybe it is. Actually, I don't actually know yet because I'm not sure if these characters carry on. I assume maybe they do, but anyway, uh, uh, what's his name's in it? One of the two popes. Can't think of his name. The one that looks like an actual oh, yeah. pope. The uh, the pope that is in Hannibal Lecter. Right. The that pope. Uh, yes. Jonathan. Jonathan Jonathan Price Price I almost said Franks uh -huh. which doesn't make sense anyway uh he plays he's in it and is a mysterious sort of narrator type dude from the beginning of it and then later he's in it in other parts and he's sort of mysterious about what his deal is but it's all set in this town of Ohio and underground and it looks it looks like it's set in the late 60s early 70s and underground is the, something called the loop which is like some big huge facility where everybody's working on crazy out of this world things that nobody knows about all top secret but some of it starts to like leak to the top of the world and uh i'll say this this first episode is mostly about a couple of little kids mm -hmm. and i hate i usually hate shows with kids in it because directors are bad with kids and kids aren't very good at, on screen but once in a while you find some kids and you're like holy crap these kids can act that's these oh, kids cool. they're amazing in it they're amazing in it anyway what happened? Why did nobody tell me about for Tales from the Loop? My gosh, it's cool. I'm so, like, this is going to be my treadmill thing for the next, well, however many times it takes me to be on the treadmill to watch it. So I can't, I'm definitely checking this out. This looks like, uh, looks like my jam. Totally. I do like, I, I jumped in to add it to my watch list in Prime Video, and uh, the first or second review in the list <laughs> caught my eye, because mm. it doesn't seem like a person who'd be interested in this sort of thing. It yeah. is like a... Uh, an older lady named Doina Day Burnt. <laughs> uh, oh, doing wow. DBA Kalyana design. She says, and I, I'm going to put this in that, uh, I feel like it needs to be in that Kristen Wig voice. Oh, I need to shoot down a balloon. Right. It needs to be in that Kristen Wig <laughs> voice that she would do on Saturday Night Live for the horrible movie reviews from your aunt. Yeah, yeah. Thing. Yeah. I honestly am starting to get sick and tired of all these modern movies and series <laughs> that are nothing but. Let me show you how many interesting angles I can get in this scene, and I'll show you now a kid watching a match flame for nine seconds, and it's supposed to be important, but it's not. <laughs> oh, I'll bet At, she's a riot to hang around with. I'll bet she's I'll just bet a she blast. Is, yes. Yeah, I'll bet there's nobody uh, more fun to sit down and have tea with than that. It's even lady. ten times worse than Man in the High Castle, another fine example of drawn-out time waster that could have been condensed into a good single movie if there was one good director. Uh -huh. Are these people connected to Bezos somehow to get paid for this crap? Oh, really? She's gone She's gone to a conspiracy theory that they're connected yeah, to Bezos? Yeah, exactly. Like, uh, do, 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 do. <laughs> what in the crap, dude? I couldn't, stand, I I would, couldn't be around her for more than five minutes. That'd be the end of me. Yeah. Uh, I highly recommend. So anyway, I've added it. I'm going to recommend this also for you uh, if you haven't okay. really seen a lot of his paintings. Search for, do a search for Simon Stahlberg or Stalin Hag or how you say his name, Stalin Hag, yeah. and just gawk at it. It's just some yeah, of the most I, I amazing stuff. I pulled up some stuff. while we were talking about it because I wasn't uh, wasn't familiar. And then it's like, oh yeah, these it it's it's stuff that reminds me of what we saw in that uh, that first trailer for the Force Awakens mm -hmm. when we saw that Star Destroyer. Uh, Star Destroyer, mm -hmm. often the uh, the, oh. bad, the destroyed one on on Jakku. Yes, it's like that feeling of like kind of, whoa, massive, and it's and it's such like a contrast. Off in the distance, massive. Yeah, yeah, and it's a contrast to the rest of the environment and all that. He's just so good at. It. He's totally. got this. He has one of a of giant rubber duckies out in the desert. Yeah, I saw that one. It's just so um, odd. So odd. So here's a couple things I wouldn't I wouldn't use for recommendals. All right. Um, but they're. 
they're kind of cool, All but right. they wouldn't. I don't wouldn't put them. You know, devote the time on Wednesday to put them in there. Um, cause <laughs> earlier this week I had a hard time sleeping. So I watched a couple things. Mm. First up was, uh, uh, also on Amazon prime. Actually, both of these are on Amazon prime, uh, Claremont's X-Men. Mm. And it is a, a, interviews with Chris Claremont, Louise Simonson, and Vicente, Jim Shooter, the late great Jim Shooter, um, uh, uh, Rob Liefeld, all about, the 80s to the 90s and early 2000s run of the X-Men that Chris Claremont like kind of pulled up from its bootstraps and turned into the biggest moneymaker powerhouse thing at Marvel at the time. And the battles that he... Oh, is Jim Shooter alive? I thought Jim Shooter died last year, no? No, I don't know. Who's Jim Shooter okay. again? Jim Shooter was the editor-in-chief of Marvel Comics. Oh, uh, I didn't know that. Okay, maybe just retired or something. Or... Maybe I, there was some news about uh, Jim Shooter last year that thought he passed away. Good. Well, I'm glad to hear he's okay. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad to hear he's all right as well. Jeez. Um, anyway, it it's a really cool back, like a really cool interview documentary about um, uh, Chris Claremont and the X Men and mm -hmm. uh, um, that whole time period of of how he was writing stories and how everyone else was was uh, either fighting him or supporting him on. You know, killing off Phoenix and and stuff like oh, that. That is so up your alley, dude. What a, it's not like that was made for you. Totally, yeah. totally up my alley. Yeah. Second thing is, uh, it was basically two in the morning. I was awake. I decided, well, I'm never gonna like get Tina to watch this. So I'm gonna watch it on my own. And it is, uh, I think it was Jay and Silent Bob reboot. I might have the name wrong, but oh, whatever it is. Yeah, uh, I'm curious. How is that? Is that any good? It is. Uh, did you ever see the Jay and Silent Bob cartoon? No. Oh yeah, no, I did. Okay. I did do that. I did you watch did. that. Yes. It was and it was pretty good. Right? It was just it was a like, Clerks cart. It was. Uh, it was the Clerks cartoon. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. That's, yeah. that's right. It was the Clerks cartoon. Yeah, it was all right. Sure. It is. Uh, it is. It's like they're doing that. <laughs> I mean, it's it's way more heavy, um, mugging for the camera kind of shots with with Jay and Silent Bob, especially Kevin Smith, like. Kind of thing, <laughs> and it's not bad. It's so funny, self-referential, and self-deprecating that it totally works. It's not. I'm not going to say, "Oh, drop everything you're doing and, and watch it right now." But if you, if you liked Clerks, lots of great Clerks references in there. Mm -hmm. A fantastic slam at Batman v Superman because mm. uh, Kevin Smith apparently when he had his heart attack. Apparently, this part is true, and he makes reference to it in the in the movie. Um, he all of his uh, celebrity fr friends felt so bad that he talked them into making cameo appearances in this movie. Uh, and he kind of plays on that in the in in the movie itself. Wow! Uh, so you've got you've got Ben Affleck, you've got Matt Damon, you've got Joey Lauren Adams, you have got Jason Lee, you've got um, uh, Shannon Elizabeth, you've got, I mean, basically you've got everybody who's ever appeared in a Kevin Smith film with the exception, I think of Alanis Morissette, but she sure gets talked about a lot. And is <laughs> they talk else? about her a lot in it. They talk about her a lot. Yeah. Oh, I guess, uh, um, who, who played, uh, Oh crap! The famous old comedian that died, and we love him, and he, the seven dirtiest things you can't say. George Carlin. Oh, George Carlin. Yeah, yeah. He's not in there, obviously. No. Um, I'm trying to think who else would be a regular, but all the clerks regulars, originals, and those all guys? the clerks originals make make a cameo. All of the chasing Amy, the dogma. Hmm. Um. Uh, and it dawned on me that that Matt Damon in Dogma played Loki. Oh yeah. So now Matt Damon has played both Thor and Loki. <laughs> Oh, weird! That's really weird. Wasn't wasn't he? He was Thor in the yeah, the, in the play, play within a movie. Yeah, yeah he was in the, the. He was. I think it was even uncredited. Still, it was uncredited. Yeah, the was other him. the other Hemsworth brother, I think, was. Uh, yeah, in Ragnarok. Was Loki mm -hmm. in Ragnarok? Yes. Yeah, yeah. the other the oh, ugly Hem Damon. The, Damon was Loki in. Okay, so Damon. So Matt Damon played Loki in both. Oh Luke no! Luke Hemsworth was. Wait a minute. Uh, was, Luke was Thor in? Luke Hem, not Luke Hemsworth, uh, the other one, Bo Hemsworth, or whatever his name is, the, the ugly Hemsworth from uh, from Westworld. He was he played. He uh, was uh, Thor then. Okay. I don't remember now. Matt Damon. Luke, they're saying Luke Hemsworth was the one who was who played Thor in the play within a movie. Oh, you're right. So he's been Loki twice. He's been Loki twice. Okay, All that's right, well. that's even cooler in a weird way, because that means they knowingly made him play Thor twice. You know what I mean? Like when when 
Tiki Watiti said, hey, what what if we make you <laughs> Loki? They're like, no way. That'd be like that time I was in Dogma or whatever. That's great. Right. And I know I'm confirming because he talks about playing Loki. Now I'm, now I'm making sure that, uh, yeah, Matt Damon's character was Loki. So uh, so he's played Loki twice now. Bummer. I thought that would have been really funny for uh, if he had played both Thor and Loki. He, uh, I'm trying to find which. So we're sure it was Luke Hemsworth, not uh, Liam Hemsworth. The, well, yes, it is. It is different Loki mythology, correct? But uh, thank you, Dice. Thank you, Dice Tomato. Yeah, we were aware. always, always with the corrections, Dice Tomato. Oh yeah, Luke Hemsworth's the ugly one from Westworld. Got it. <laughs> Not the ugly. I mean, he's just you know he's like us. He's a normal looking, average looking guy, and he's he's yeah. great on Westworld. Really like him on there. There's nothing wrong with him. Liam's the no, one that that, is... uh, that was on the Wrecking Ball with what's her name. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yes. And then, uh, and then, of course, Chris is the the most handsome, most buff, most cool brother of the right, three. Right. But yet, they all love each other. They're like, you know what? They're and, like, they like them. Luke is all over that uh, that most recent season of Westworld, man. You yeah, get, he's, he's get, good. Uh, he's good in there. If you've been complaining that you don't get enough lesser Hemsworth. <laughs> yeah. Good news, everybody. He's back. Back with a with he's a vengeance. And... Did you get all the way through it? Or are you still digging? Mm -hmm. Nope. We we finished that. Was I right about it. the last two being a little bit of a just a kind of a crappy wind down it just wasn't great it, it felt uh, yeah i mean it, it kind of felt rushed it's it um the whole the whole season was a really nice change of pace from the first two seasons obviously because of the environment that they're in yeah i just, i love the cyberpunk take on all that stuff like everything mm -hmm. up to the second to the last episode was some of my favorite tv of the year just loved it mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. then those last two were just a series of john wick fights and mm -hmm. monologuing and that was it like it was just yeah. like fight, 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 fight. I know what the future of the dealio is. <laughs> fight, fight, right. fight, 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 fight. You know, like now I'm going to send my consciousness into the schmurgy sh ball, yeah, whatever the thing ball. it's called. <laughs> schmurgy like, ball. Schmurgy ball works. That's fine. Right up into the schmurgy ball. Nothing wrong with that. All right, quick announcement. Uh, TMS play date is happening Monday. <laughs> Monday, Memorial Day. Yeah, we're going to have a very memorial, memorable Memorial Day with a play date in the morning. Uh, we encourage everybody who can to come live. Instead of just not having a show on Memorial Day, we're going to have, uh, we're going to play games. We're going to play Jackbox mm -hmm. games. We're going to play trivia games and all the fun games they give you there and a myriad of those. So please come check those out and be a part of it for the live stream. That's at frogpants.tv or twitch.tv slash frogpants. Either one gets you there. And uh, that's on Monday at the normal showtime, 9 a.m. in the morning, Mountain Time. So that's 8 a.m. Pacific and uh, 11 a.m. Eastern. And we'll be playing for a good hour and a half. So come join us, won't you? All right. Yeah. Looking forward to that. It'll be fun. Yeah. Can't wait. Be a blast. Yeah. Let's, uh, let's now do uh, this thing that we do. Hold on. I forgot how to do it. Here it is. <laughs> Time for the morning news brought to you by. Today's episode is sponsored by There Will Be Dungeons Teas from Phoenix Pearl Tea. To celebrate 100 episodes and two years of great shows, we're offering 20% off of any There Will Be Dungeons Teas with the promo code TWBD100. That's TWBD100 at checkout. Just go to phoenixpearltea.com slash TWBD to check it out. Yeah, I recommend it. All right, so... A man, <laughs> we'll start our stories today with this. A man wearing a watermelon on his head was arrested for a robbery. So his disguise was basically a watermelon on his head. That's great. Two little eye holes cut out. Like that's the, yep. that's the, the only disguise that he could find. Yep. And it'll save him from the coronavirus, but it will not save him from... I don't know, whatever botulism you'd get from an old watermelon. Yeah, jeez. Okay. Uh, nearly everybody is wearing a face mask these days, says this article, following recommendations to slow the spread of the virus. But despite everything, uh, or sorry, everything seen in the past two months, the two melon heads who walked into the Louisa ah. Sheets. What's that, a place? Is that a store? Must be a store. I guess uh, Louisa Sheets. Louisa Sheets. I'm looking to see what Louisa Sheets is. I don't know what that is. Um, anyway, we'll find out where it is shortly. This is on May 6th. Uh, that absolutely turned some heads, says this article. The Louisa Police Department posted news release on its Facebook page Saturday seeking information about two people who donned ho uh, hollowed out watermelons with holes. <laughs> they had holes in their eyes. I know. Uh, no, I'm looking at this right now. 
There is yeah. like no peripheral vision with these things. No. Like all the all the officer had to do is just kind of walk up to the side of them and push them over. <laughs> yeah, it's ridiculous. Here, Chad, you guys can get a get a taste. So of this. Louisa, Louise obviously is the town. Sheets is the um, is the store, and it's like a tobacco. What do they have here? That's American good. chain of convenience stores and coffee shops owned by the Sheets family. Fast food convenience store items. Oh, never even heard of it. Must be a regional Their thing. Headquarters are in Altoona, Pennsylvania. Ah, what do you got there? What kind of fish you got there? Sorry, Altoona. That's all you get. It's all tuna. Sorry, all tuna all, all, the, tuna. all the time. Um, it says here. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Uh, so you can, okay, here it is. The post asked for uh, help in locating the two people in connection with the robbery. Uh, they call it larceny. Uh, some people call it larceny. It's the most maybe made the best larceny ever. I'm starting to talk like a certain somebody. Although it's <laughs> unclear what was allegedly stolen from the place. However, according to a dispatcher with the Louisa County Sheriff's Office, one of the people in the photo was arrested earlier in the week after inquiries from the Daily Progress. The post was updated to say the arrest had been made. So one of them, one of the melon heads have been caught. The melon heads. Isn't that a band? The melon heads. Is that a band? What am I thinking of? Lemon heads. Is lemon the heads. <laughs> like there's and some blind melon. And blind melon. And these guys are definitely blind melons. They can't see. <laughs> the blind melon heads. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. Um... <laughs> The hell was I? These guys are killing me. When, uh, when, uh, when life gives you melons, yep. you make melon helmets. <laughs> says uh, they would not give their name and provide, or, or the person that was arrested, but the dispatcher said the arrest occurred a few days ago. Let's see. Comments on the Facebook po- post were full of photos of, from other people who apparently had seen the duo elsewhere in town mm. wearing those melon heads, I guess. Oh, nice. That's great. Like, basically, let's go out on the town. Let's wrap up with a robbery, but let's make sure to go hit... Uh, at all of our favorite bars and restaurants beforehand. What an odd thing to do with your time. <laughs> you know, like I understand robbery, I get it. Sometimes you're desperate, sometimes you're just a criminal, sure. sometimes whatever, sure. but there's nothing else laying around to put on your head. Like a ski mask? Come on. Yeah. Like worst case. Like even a even a even like a bandana and some glasses. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Something. Yeah. You're gonna smell like a freaking gnarly old fruit rind. Yeah, exactly. This is just horrendous. Mm. Well, I don't know. It could have been. I mean, those two guys are wearing the same clothes, but they're not wearing melons on their heads. But uh, <laughs> one of them's got seeds stuck in his ears, and the other one's hair is matted down and all soggy. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Those could be the guys. This guy smells like a picnic. What's wrong? <laughs> uh, oh, Blue Ridge John educating the chat room on who the melon heads were. It is a group, I guess. Uh, the melon heads are. Uh, fans of the LA Rams. Or a fan group. But yeah, not a music group. A uh, group of LA fan, Rams fans that attend games with carved out melon, uh, watermelon uh, placed on their head. The melon heads are similar to the cheese heads of the Green Bay Packers. Okay, well, I guess that makes sense. Maybe that's what you were thinking of. Yeah. Do you think? I these- mean, believe me, I, I have no doubt that somewhere there's an indie band called the Melon Heads. That it oh, seems yeah. like as many as many bands as there are out there, there has to be a Melon Heads band. It's probably a let's see, Melon Heads band. Got to be something. Oh yeah, here it is. The Melonheads so. found it. Um, classic and modern rock and roll tunes delivered. So so covers basically, uh, mm-hmm. with the power and drive of a heavyweight knockout punch. Look no further than the Melonheads. Great. All right, they're a cover band. Brian, the, that's perfect. We're the Mountain Dew of rock and roll. <laughs> But isn't it? It's cool that they're a cover band because you would do the cover. Well, how do bill. you know that they're a cover band? Was, you just said that they they do. Uh, it said what was, what was it that they said they? Oh shit! I lost it. Hold on. Hold oh. on. Nothing. Nothing that you described. Doesn't that sound like a cover band? Um. Here, I'll I'll read it again. Uh, yeah, read it again. Here it is. It says. Yeah. Hold on. Here, I'm waiting for it to load. Okay. Yeah. All right. About here we go. Uh, whenever you want to hear your favorite classic and modern rock and roll oh, tunes. Okay. All right. I didn't, like, I didn't hear that part. That sounds like covers to me. That definitely sounds like covers. Yeah. Yes. All right. Well. Oh, look. Yes. Here's a, here's their cover of Better Man by uh, Pearl Jam. Let's see here. Oh. Can't find no, a buttered did, ham. That's what I always thought they said. It was that buttered does ham. Not sound like, uh, does not sound like a cover of. Of uh, Pearl Jam. <laughs> Can't find a buttered ham. Well, maybe they mean that other Better Man song. Um, Is there another Better Man song? 
Uh, he, uh, the better man. What am I thinking of? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> simple man is what simple you're thinking. Simple man, simple man. Yes. Uh, but the, but the no, but I found, I found, uh, thanks to, um, Gidget, I found, I think, my favorite music video of May, maybe oh. even of 2020. Wow, really? It's, uh, wow. I put it on Twitter. It's, uh, a uh, song called Hypno Dancer by a band called Little Big. They're apparently in the Eurovision Song Contest right now. Yeah. Here, I'll give you a link to the video and you can watch it. Uh, is that actually going on right now? I didn't realize that was happening. I think it is, or it, it either just just got delayed or just like finished up early or something. I don't know what the story is, but... Uh, oh, yeah, Eurovision Song Contest. It seems like they could do that remote. You don't have to do that live. Yeah, I would think so. Huh, interesting. Yeah. I don't know. It's they, they like having the big audience for it, like American Idol. American Idol had, uh, boy, both American Idol and, and The Voice had their finales um, this last weekend. We don't watch either of those shows, so we didn't see these live. But yeah. apparently people were saying that Ryan Seacrest looked like he had a stroke during the filming of Ugh. the finale because one side of his face was, was a little droopy, one of his eyes was partially closed, and he was slurring his words at points. Oh, no. That's not <laughs> but good. But he says he's fine. He says okay. He's fine. Uh, he may have been, you know, a little. Uh, uh, I don't know. Could have been. Could have been. And then uh, we did see. <laughs> <laughs> we were watching something, and we switched over on Sunday night. Oh, I think it was right before the news or, or something. We saw the finale of The Voice, and um, oh, one of the judges, whose name the country guy, and I can't believe I can't remember his name because that that, that seems like something I should know. Mm. Uh, um was about to announce or was talking about the finale like oh blake shelton thank you mm. he was doing the like all right well you know we're gonna announce the uh, the winner i just want to say to all of the other uh the, the all the contestants because <laughs> it's like on zoom yeah so the whole, like you know his his voice kind of fades out and the they cut to the zooms of all the contestants and they're like looking around like are they gonna fix this is something gonna happen and perfect perfect Gotta love, gotta love reality shows in the time of coronavirus. Yeah, they're all none of. We know more about how to do video conferencing and podcast live stuff than all of Hollywood. They've had to figure That's it right. out. That's right, exactly. They yeah. should be hiring us to say, to to teach them how to do Zoom. Yep, it's not as hard. How to as set think. up beautiful and elaborate backgrounds. Yeah, look at that. How to have well lit faces and hats on and headphones <laughs> that's right exactly uh by the way i was looking at ryan seacrest i think his problem might be he's got just some droopy plastic surgery going on he's got some stuff mm. that maybe isn't holding on to the bone like it was meant to I maybe don't know. yeah he looks fine whatever if you don't hire that guy for his face you hire him for his voice and his presentation you hire him for both i mean he is a he is uh <clears throat> a very non-threatening generic generically handsome looking looking guy with a good presenter voice a good agreed uh, yeah very yeah, he got but, an amazing radio voice is where he got to yeah, where he's but, at but uh yeah but you know generically handsome but i'd say nothing nothing like wow yeah, he's just smoking hot he's just all right yeah, he's generic he's basically what you would draw for for a ha generic handsome dude what if he's what if he's Mr. Fantastic and he was letting his, his powers were like drooping on the side? <laughs> the ultimate nullifier was uh, was affecting his ability to to hold on to his stretchy form. Yeah, and he was just drooping down. He was just kind of like dripping, and you could hear somebody in the background going, "Hey, Doc, your face is dripping off." So you're like, "Oh my gosh, the thing is over there." Like, what if we've uncovered the fi the Fantastic Four in real it's life? Funny. Finally, yes, this is how the MCU introduces him. He's been under our noses. The entire time. That'd be a great, great little uh, viral marketing thing during a viral <laughs> time. Is it even possible to say viral marketing or something goes viral? We talked about this on yesterday with Tom. Yeah, is, yesterday can with we Tom. even say I, that? Is it thing? I feel weird saying it now. It feels weird. I do too. Yeah. Oh yeah. This this uh, man coronavirus sure has gone viral. Yeah, it really has <laughs> gone viral. But I mean, if I said to you, "Hey, I got a YouTube video I just put up. I sure hope it goes viral." It feels weird to say now. I don't like saying it. Yeah. What do you, so what do yeah. we say instead? I hope it blows up. Mm. But then we'll have some bombing, and then I that'll sound weird. I hope it gets weird. shared in <laughs> wide release by multiple people. I hope that people pass it around via email <laughs> and social media. Hope people smash that like and subscribe button. I sure do, too. Wait, don't say smash, because something might get smashed in the news, and then we can't say smash anymore. <laughs> so you're talking on Twitter. I, I know it's veering off in left field here, but you're talking on Twitter about the... Uh, 
like VR places, places where you go and you share a VR system. Yeah, like what, I wonder what Vegas, they do. The Venetian. Yeah, like that thing. What are those people going to do? I wonder. Well, there are. Um, I don't have it in front of me, but um, my Oculus Quest has a little rubber gasket thing mm-hmm. that you basically can put on and take off. Um, Mine's right here. Before you use it, do you have one as well? Yeah, it's, you're talking about this thing, right? The oh no no no, the one that inserts in here. That's the um, there's a separate one that you can put on. That's here. I'll... I think that's for glasses wearers, right? No. Oh, I thought it was so if you had glasses, sure. it helps. So like, space here's it. my here's my Oculus, right? Yeah. My Oculus headset, yeah. Oculus. Oh, mine too. Yeah. And I've got I've got this thing. Uh huh. This little rubber gasket deal. Oh yeah, look and at that. And you could have multiples of these, and it just like basically it has a little sleevey sleeve that goes over the. Um, the foam part. Yeah, I wonder and, if it's uh, enough though. Is it enough? Do we know? Like we haven't tested that. We got to fig- make sure it's enough. Even if they wash them, like what what other parts of the headset does some little kid put his his poo finger on the on the lens? Sure. Oh yeah, no, there's there's a lot of stuff like that. But I mean, that's that's the only way that something like this. And you just have multiples of these, and you show people that that while one of them is being worn, the others are in a a UV UV Clorox combo bath <laughs> yeah. on the side yeah they 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 will come up with a spray or something that you could spray on a surface and see if, if it reacts to the particular strain like that's a thing you yeah. can do so maybe I'm they sure. get to that yeah. point i don't know maybe. i was already yeah. hesitant to put on a public vr headset i, I think i might be like completely the, opposed the only to it now. the only one i was planning on doing was that uh shadows of the empire thing at the venetian and now it's like yeah maybe those guys could make a a version, a home version. Yeah, we got the uh, hard, we got the hardware. Just put it at home. Let's do it. The technology. Yeah, I guess I just worry about entire businesses that have set themselves up to be a big VR public mm-hmm. VR thing. And there are plenty of those, like in malls and things, and I don't know how those are going to do. Well, would you worry about going to um, HyperX Esports? And... Uh, no, because everything at HyperX can be can be there's surfaces that aren't going to be like you're just going to be touching them with your hands not yeah. going to be putting your face on them plus you can like uh, plus you can clean that all that can be cleaned between use and you know like mm-hmm. in a way that's mm-hmm. uh, that's like 100 percent not right up next to your face whereas a headset Agreed. you just Agreed. how do you know but yeah hyper x i i look for, i hope they make it through this because i'd like to go back there it's mm-hmm. cool mm-hmm too. All right. we need our our mario kart tournament that we were going to uh yeah. completely take over right we were so close we were going to own that Oh we were totally going to own that. There was one guy who wasn't part of the Frog Pants slash Tadpool group. Yeah, I was and, excited uh, to actually meet that dude. You know? Mm-hmm. I know. I wanted just, to know what was Just kind of get an idea of what he's like looking around at all of us in our, <laughs> <laughs> our matching Rob from marketing t-shirts wondering what the heck is going on. Yeah, heck yeah. yeah. All right, here's a great story about a banana. We like banana stories, so this is one of those. I'm not going to fall for the banana story, Scott. You shouldn't. Uh, okay. I don't know why she cared. Maybe it's because it was getting gross. But anyway, a woman has returned to her office after all these months of not being allowed at work to rescue a banana she left at her desk nine weeks ago. Nine and a half weeks. This is the new nine and a half <laughs> nine weeks. Nine and a half weeks of banana. <laughs> yeah. Uh, many of us had no idea the last time we checked our desks would be our last time we see our office for months. Workplaces were quickly abandoned by those who were able to do their jobs at home due to the crisis. Uh uh, has says here had we known many of us would have grabbed a few extra things from the office like our calendar our favorite mug or whatever to give our makeshift workspaces at home a more professional feel but for one woman her concern was over what she left behind and it was much more specific uh it had dawned on mara louise brennan that when she walked out of her office she had waiting in her drawer what was at the time a fresh new one a dirty old banana that's now like black and uh, shriveled there's a photo here are you telling me bananas are not supposed to be black? No, they're not. You're not. They're black. They're not supposed to be black. Plus, you're not supposed to eat that at that state. Like you're done there, oh, right? Geez. Not even banana yeah. bread. You can't even do banana bread with that thing now. No, that is jerky. That is basically, that is basically a. It's it's black peel. There is nothing of value inside that. Yeah, you don't you don't want. Oh, it. I like. Boy, Demir, so so good about providing a second photo of what a banana is supposed to look like. Yeah, thanks, Demir. We didn't thanks, know. Demir. Yeah. yeah, we didn't know about the yellow uh, peel and the sort of fleshy yeah. uh, fruit inside. We didn't know. Yes. Is that how it's supposed to look? Wow. Yeah. All right, thank you. But look at that. That's a that's a that's grody. So you think she really went uh, back for it? She just okay. <laughs> I think she went back for other stuff. She went back for other stuff, yeah. and just because it's the mirror they had to like. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. They because uh, what else are they going to do with the mirror? <laughs> That's what they mm-hmm. do. They're mm-hmm. just sitting around going, "Hey, has anybody done something dumb today?" Write about that and and repeat yourself in every paragraph about five times yes. because of, that we're the mirror. Yeah. Hey, whatever <sighs> it takes to stay afloat, Brian. Whatever it takes. Whatever it takes. Is there anything? Well, see, that's what happened to that. I had an orange that I left in a drawer forever at work, and I still have that somewhere. i got to mm, find it. Uh-huh. But it's petrified and perfectly preserved. You don't and have your Twinkie anymore, do you? I still have that somewhere, too. And the Twinkie, if you looked at it, it's a little smaller than its original size because it did shrink. But proportionally and color and by all appearances, that looks like a Twinkie-ass Twinkie. And it's ready mm-hmm, to roll mm-hmm. until you touch it and you realize, oh, my gosh, that's a stone. Yeah, it's it's uh it may look it may look the same on the outside. <laughs> I want to be buried with that Twinkie. That's what I want. I'm sorry. I want to be I think I want to be incinerated when I die. So uh yeah. put the put the Twinkie in there with Cream, me. Cremated, you mean? Yeah. What I say, incinerated? Well, incinerate, I guess incinerated. I guess it's just not as it nice is, a It is it is a form of incineration. It's just I guess it's it's like uh it's a less sensitive term for it, right? It's like saying uh uh, yeah, I'm going to the doctor to get spayed. Yeah. <laughs> right. Are you having a vasectomy? No, I'm getting spayed. Same thing. means the same thing. We just It's just a uh, different context. Yeah. Good point. All right. Um, <laughs> Are you going to get cream fillingated with that Twinkie? Ah, I like it. They're just going to yes, jam, jam me full I kind of, of rode. I, uh, Jerry Tolbert actually said cream aided with a Twinkie, and I, I kind of played off of that. Oh, and, well uh, done, Dr. Tolbert. Well done. Yes, yes. I piggybacked on his existing joke. I wish Dr. Tolbert was my doctor because then I could consult him all the time about things. Yes. Spade is for females, neutered is for males, but I was, I was referring to a hysterectomy or a. Chat room, are you. T- are you- yeah. Taking Brian on? Is that what you're doing? I They're wouldn't- taking me on. Dice Tomato in his. In his uh, he, he likes to do that. He does. Exactly. Oh, spay is for lady dogs and neuters for yeah. the dudes. Yeah, spaying oh. is when yes yeah, for lady dogs. It still works with neutered. what Brian said. He didn't mean. Well, I said. Yeah, I did not say me specifically. Yeah. I've been neutered. I I said vasectomy, <laughs> so it's me. You're going after dice tomato. It's me. You went after my vast deference. Yeah, see. Which I still have. Mine are functional and hanging out. And you know the reason I've got all this still, Brian. I didn't have my. I didn't do the snippy snip. Oh, like I the, remember we talked about this. Yes, in case. In case the in world case needs of me. A, a pandemic. Yeah, that you'd a, have to repopulate the earth. That's right. If the world needs me, I'm ready, man. Sign me up. Stepping up to the table. Well, who's nice. got the sperm? Yeah. Johnson over here. He's got your sperm. Have some, everyone. Enjoy. Enjoy the sperm of this man. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, moving on. This is great. A man makes money buying his own pizza on DoorDash. This is great. I love this. Mm. A pizza for which he charged 24 bucks was being uh-huh. advertised for 16 on DoorDash. And when he secretly ordered it for himself, the app paid his restaurant the full 24 while only charging him 16. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Take advantage of the system. Um, anyway, he had not asked to be put on the app. He later found out. It was part of a trial ga- uh, cr- trial to gauge customer demand. Uh, content strategist R- Ranjan Roy. Oh, that's a cool name. Ranjan Roy. Ranjan Roy. That's uh, Deep Roy's brother, probably. I don't know. Yes. Uh, blogged about content the anonymous. Content strategist. <laughs> yeah, was that it? Okay. Jeez. Sounds like a real job, doesn't it? Um, yeah, yeah. Mr. Roy said he first heard about the situation in March 2019 when his friends started receiving complaints about deliveries, even though uh, his outlets did not deliver. At that point, he discovered he had been added to DoorDash and noticed it was charging a lower price for one of his premium pizzas. So he ordered 10 pizzas, paid it. Oh, this is like working the turnip market. This is amazing. He totally, yeah, he totally did. He totally like Daisy made this. Wow. Yeah, he ordered 10 pizzas, paid 160 bucks, uh, and had them delivered to a friend's house. The restaurant then paid him 240 uh, for the order by DoorDash. The next time uh, the restaurant prepared uh, his friend's order by boxing up the pizzas without any toppings, maximizing the profit from the mismatched price. Because <laughs> his friend was in on it. So he didn't have to include any expensive toppings. That's amazing. That's uh, anyway, so DoorDash didn't respond to the BBC News requesting for comment. Um, but Mr. Roy said, we found out afterward that this was all the result of a demand test. Which I guess huh. is just a way for them to say, hey, this restaurant that's not currently doing anything... We'll put them on the thing. If people buy it and do it at a lower price, is that shows demand? I don't know. That seems weird. Yeah, you should probably work with them on this. You know, like 
you probably yeah. let them know that you're on there because I don't think you're supposed to just be on there. I don't no, know. No, I know. Like, you, exactly. It's not like they can say, hey, we put you on DoorDash. People seem to like it. Uh, would you like us to make it official? Yeah. <laughs> oh, we wondered why there were people with red bags showing up to our restaurant asking for food. <laughs> yeah, it's weird. Anyway, yeah. hey, look at this. I'll tell you what isn't weird. Us taking a break before Wendy gets mm, here. That's not weird at all. No, no, not at all. So we're going to do that. And when we get back, we'll we'll talk to her. We got a cool email between. The, well, it's not that cool, but, you know, it's a it's an email. Someone needs help. We're going to help them. Uh, before all that, yeah. a song and a, from our hearts and souls. Brian, you brought one. What is it? Yeah, this is um, this is an indie from a an artist that you've heard me play. This picture is on dating, the etiquette of dating. We are going to follow some of these students as they go on a date and see if their manners have anything to do with their fun. Henry knows he ought to have some vegetables, good diet, and all that, you know. You are listening to Adele Dazeem. Uh, you are indeed. <clears throat> Welcome back to the show, everybody. That was an 80s ass song. I loved it. Yeah, yeah pretty awesome. Yeah. Uh, it goes perfectly with uh, Dan's voice, too. Yeah, for sure. Uh, very cool. Uh, man, lately the songs have been great. Your requests have been good. Brian's picks have been good. Just good well, music. You. Yeah. Unless you're watching this on YouTube. Sorry, guys. You don't get to hear any <laughs> of it. The one, the one uh, cluster of people who are missing out. Yeah, oh. feel a little bad for those guys, but maybe you should, uh, abs- uh, you know, embrace podcasting and and get a podcast app and yeah. download the show. Yeah, Come on. maybe that's how you for? should do it. Because the podcast yeah, listeners maybe. get it, YouTubers, sorry, Twitch, you get away with it. You get away with it for now. I mean, I don't know. Bezos may step up and say, "All right, that's enough," and then go <laughs> whatever he does with his weird laugh, and then and then we're screwed. <laughs> Like dead on impersonation is perfect. I forget how he does it. Hold on, Bezos laugh. We gotta hear it. It's been a while. It's not. It's no Marissa Meyer, but it's good. No, he's 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 up there. Okay, Uh here it is. Uh, Bezos best laughs compilation. Here we go. YouTube comes to the rescue, even though sometimes they suck. All right, here we go. You want to be a chef? Maybe you want to be a dancer. I don't know what you want to do. I'm not sure my boss is gonna like. He just gets really scary and loud and like in your face. That wasn't one of his, like, it didn't seem like that was one of his, uh, <laughs> not pro- you do, Well, let's find you another one. Follow your passions. Right. I would love for it to be after I'm dead. <laughs> 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 uh, that's, that was like bordering on uh, Rogan enthusiasm there. <laughs> yeah. He's enthusiastic because he just got a lot of money from Spotify. Wouldn't, uh, wouldn't we be? Yes. All right. <clears throat> My sister is incoming. I believe. Uh, if I add her to this call, one would assume she will answer it. And then we will discuss our matters openly. Okay. All right. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. And, okay. Uh, about to find out if that'll work. Hi, Wendy. Are you there? Yes, hi. Welcome. Oh, hi. H- hello. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. usually, usually I'm interrupting you guys. So no, 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 no. no, no. no we just talk. Mm-hmm. We just talk and tell you answer, and you're totally fine. Mm-hmm. Uh, you could say whatever you want, and it wouldn't even matter. Uh, but I do have a, a slightly new version of this to play. Here you go. Something wrong, Batman? Has anybody seen Wendy? Sensorily. Well, that's totally weird. <laughs> 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 made that word up. Uh, hey, uh, it's my sister Wendy. She's a therapist. She also resides in Minnesota, which has nothing to do with any of this except to say that she's not right here with us anymore. But it feels like it because we have the modern technology to allow us to talk to her right here. Uh, anyway, she comes on the show on a weekly basis, does a thing called Therapy Thursday where we help people with real problems. And uh, we're happy to have you here. How the heck are you? How's things going? Uh, we're good. We're we're good. Yeah. I'm, I'm confused generally about how life is supposed to work. <laughs> yeah, we're good. <laughs> we were we were having this discussion earlier about what what uh memor- what we're doing for Memorial Day on the show, and normally it'd be like a bank holiday and all. But holidays are like weird now. Like, what do they even mean? Like, what's yeah, a- and you don't even see them coming anymore. Like, mm. some someone had to remind me, like, oh, there's no school Monday. I'm like, why? Why yeah. do you days off? They're like, it's Memorial Day. I would have, I mean, knock me over with what is it, a feather? <laughs> I had zero idea. I was honestly thinking it was still march yeah. yeah yeah same by the way 
we got to get Wendy on for at least a game or two. On, oh, on how Monday fun would that be? Oh my gosh, we blast. play these. Tri- we're going to play these trivia games with people instead of doing a regular show. And you've played Jackbox games before, right? Yeah, it's Where not you have even your phone. Really, it doesn't even have to be trivia. I mean, uh, well, yeah, whatever, whatever we got. But you've played Jackbox yeah. games, right, Wendy? You've done that. Uh, my kid did last night. It's the first time I've seen it, so I haven't oh, done it myself. It's very so. cool. It's it like fun? you know, fun games. Some are trivia based. Some is like there's one that's called Drawful where. You basically you have to draw a thing and then uh, guess what everybody else's drawings are and the closer you get the more points you get and it's oh, like nice. kind of Pictionary ish thing. It's a blast and you just have to have a phone. So mm-hmm. um, I got one. Yeah. I so maybe it. we'll all we'll talk <laughs> offline and see what what's. Yeah, possible. that'd be fun. Yeah, that'd be fun. So definitely you should have me draw something because I'm super good at drawing oh, and perfect. also. You know what I'm really good at is remembering things real quickly. So for sure. <laughs> we've, we've noticed. And coming up with new words. Yeah, like new that, words uh, all the time. Is like there a game well. where you make up words? Because I could do that. Yeah, it's called <laughs> it's called the TMS. Uh, the TMS is what it's called. Uh, <laughs> the thing, people always think, oh, Scott with his word remembering or, oh, he made up a fake word for a thing. This is a Johnson trait. We all do yeah. it. We hear Wendy yeah. do it once in a while. My dad did it constantly. Like you just make you just make stuff up sometimes and it's fine. We own it. We eat it. We live it. We breathe it. It's genetic, people. It's genetic. We're sorry. Yeah, it's all those Dorito salads we had when we were kids. <laughs> the uh, ho- the trees. Yeah, the ho trees. The ho trees. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the, wait, wait, was it you or who called them the ho trees? T- t- uh, Mom and I had a laughing fit about that because we could not remember how to say it. We just kept saying the ho trees. Oh, right. You guys are all out of it one night. There is, by the way, nothing funnier. This is a real tribute to my mom, actually. There is nothing funnier than my mom losing herself in a laughing fit it is the funniest <laughs> freaking thing and you used to be able to get her to do it by just handing like handing her a controller and saying here mom try sonic the hedgehog and she'd move like a centimeter of the character in the game and she'd drop the controller put her hand in her face and laugh so hard that all of us would just die she's the best laugher it's really good so anyway. i my daughter has inherited that and if we can get her laughing i mean she falls over <laughs> like it is amazing it is the most joyful thing to watch oh, i feel man. like underrated good good silent laughers that get weak <laughs> yeah i like that they get weak laughing uh I miss your kids, so I can't wait to see them when this is all over. That'll be good. I know. It'll be fun. Um, all right. Let's get to today's question. It is uh, pandemic-related, possibly, or at least sort of connected, perhaps. I don't know. You'll you'll be able to tell us. But we got this from, we'll call them Jay. We don't want to use their name. Uh, the subject is, oh, this is the wrong one. I'm sorry. Uh, sorry. Yeah. We'll call them F. Uh, I was That's skipping, that, skipping matches the, that matches the name that I see here. <laughs> yeah, that thing down in end times. If I read that, it'd be weird. All right. <laughs> here's, uh, here's the email. It says, Scott and Brian and Wendy, I've been listening to TMS since early 2020, just a few weeks before the lockdown craziness that has been our reality this year. I've got a question for your sister. For the last few weeks, my eight-year-old daughter has been having trouble sleeping. She says she's scared of monsters. It takes her a really long time to get to sleep, sometimes a couple of hours. And she seems to sleep fitfully, waking up and even crawling into bed with us a lot of, uh, or sorry, a couple of times. We've tried to assume uh, that there are, or, sorry, we've tried to assure her that there are no monsters. And lately, we've been having uh, family prayer that seems to be helping a little. I can't help but feel that maybe it's somehow related to all of this disruption we've been thrown into. But I was wondering if your sister could offer any insights slash uh, assistance. Thanks. Now, the truth of the matter is, right, that there, there, some kids just go through this stage no matter what, right? Like, it doesn't matter what's going on in the world, or even just the world itself can be uh, scary. And so, you know, kids go through this. They saw something scary on TV one night. Uh, they end up with two weeks of, of, of nightmares. It doesn't necessarily mean that, you know, the COVID-19 lockdown is the cause of this, but it probably isn't helping. Uh, so, where, so what do you want to tell them? Almost- be more inclined to say that they're picking up on it from the parents. The parents are, are worrying and the kid is kind of picking up on it from that. But. Yeah, that's possible. That's true. Yeah, and actually, Brian, you, you're on the right path to at least a good question to ask yourselves. Um, I, I noticed in the email, and this is not to be critical, I promise. It's more like it's like such a parent way to respond, but may not be the most helpful at the moment, which is there's no such thing as monsters. Well, mm-hmm. you know what there is, actually. Mm-hmm. <laughs> there are monsters. And when a kid, and what we do, and this is this is very typical behavior we have with other humans, not just in parenting. Parenting, I think, is the most commonplace. It happens because kids will express a fear. And as a parent, 
we know that's silly or we know that and nine times out of 10, they're actually like interrupting us doing something else to let us know they're afraid of something. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so we're like, okay, z -z -z -z, yeah, I got to go. Can you just not be afraid of that? That'd be great. Right. <laughs> and so I'm not saying that's what they're doing. I'm sure they're being very soothing and lovely about it, but there is a tendency we have to discount someone's feelings and experience mainly because it makes us uncomfortable. It is either inconvenient for us and or makes us uncomfortable and or makes us feel, oh no, what's wrong with my kid? Or, you know, it's actually about us a lot. Mm -hmm. And so here's my question for them. I'm not jumping down their throat immediately, but I'm gonna just, I'm jumping to the most helpful thing to ask is how are you guys doing? Mm -hmm. How are you feeling about monsters? Like, yeah. where are you at with stuff? so that you then are interacting with your child in particular ways. This is true pandemic wide and lockdown wide for many people, um, is that your energy, which my guess is a combo of bored, frenetic, stressed, <laughs> scared, mm -hmm. like not great. Mm -hmm. um, the kids have no choice but to pick that up. They're with you all the time. Yes, you're with them all the time, but they are with you all the time and so maybe there is an element of, of that getting absorbed and they're reflecting back fear. Mm -hmm. And so we're mirrors to our kids. Mm -hmm. And not everything is true this way, but some element is always there where they're picking up on our energy that it's not okay to have this feeling or, you know, whatever. So we want to be really careful with telling a kid not that something's not real and that they need to just zip it or don't be afraid. There's no reason to be afraid, et cetera. That it, it feels like the most normal thing to do as a parent. Mm -hmm. And most times it's probably fine. But during a pandemic, I don't know if those tactics uh, work because the fear doesn't go away in their house. And so, you know, maybe they're just still feeling it. So the question would be, what are you guys doing with your emotions about this? Mm -hmm. And maybe you're stuffing it or maybe you're talking about it in a way. I mean, I know personally, I have a, a hard time. Um, I'm not very subtle in front of my kids <laughs> mm. it's like this is terrifying or oh we should talk about the, you know and then we talk and we talk and we talk it through and they but sometimes I forget they're like around the corner you mm -hmm. know yeah and so as I'm dealing with the things I'm scared of or frustrated by or whatever you know they they're, they're maybe yeah, yeah maybe legitimately hearing it as opposed to just picking up on my vibe mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. but I think the antidote at least I have found is to make sure they're very open conversations. Like, okay, you just heard mom saying she's freaked out by this thing. What are you thinking? And they're like, well, you're overreacting or whatever. They might have their opinion, yeah. but often it's, uh, shows up like my youngest will, he'll just cry mm -hmm. and it's cause he's tired, but he's also feeling the stress of the whole house. And it's like, he's the little thermometer. Mm -hmm. And, and sometimes a kid is a thermometer. And for the adults listening who grew up as the thermometers, you know exactly what I'm talking about. You felt the energy of a room when you would walk into it. You knew there was a fight just before you got in there, or you knew there was some conflict or someone sad or so you're really feeling stuff. Um, and maybe as a little kid, you don't know where to put that. So it shows up in your dreams mm -hmm. and it shows up in your um, play. I mean, there's, you know, I, this will be documented at some point and written about, but just the way kids play a little bit differently, right? Mm -hmm. Or because play is work. Play is how they process what they're experiencing. Dreams are another way we process what we're experiencing. So they're not, don't take them lightly, but I don't know if you have to panic worry. It's more about, you know, maybe creating some space for yourself for some calmness and then checking in with that kid and making sure they're feeling safe and calm um, because the, the monsters in the dream are a way to talk about it. Um, but I, sometimes we miss what it's really about because we're, you know, we pinpoint to, Oh, you're having a bad dream. It's right. about a monster. Right. Well, let's fix Rush it. There's off. no monster. Yeah. Is it, yeah. let's say you're a parent who normally under normal circumstances are, are you're, you know, very chill and, and with your kids, you're, you're sturdy and, and reliable and, you know, they, they know they are, have your protection and they can come to you with things and all of that. But then this happens and then you start to show your stress and that you've got this vulnerability to what's happening around you in your environment. And then your kids perceive, Oh, that person is not the end all be all 
my handle my everything. Is, yeah, yeah, you're not the rock that I thought you were. Then they, I don't know, they have a little subconscious, not panic, but you know, they they, they just see you differently now. Is that? A, I mean, that probably must be a thing, right? Yeah, for sure, that is a thing, and I think um, it's it. Their developmentally comes at time where a a kid's psyche can handle that better Mm -hmm. than other times usually they're i mean think about teenagers all they do is see that you're stupid and wrong right (laughs) yeah so there there's something that switches in the brain that allows that to happen without it crushing their psyche but when you're six or five or four or seven anywhere sub nine really Mm -hmm. you know it it can be very um ground shaking for you and you're not quite sure what to do. So instead of reassuring your kid, there's no monsters, maybe it's listening to see what they're afraid of. And then the reassurance can come in, you know, mommy and daddy are okay. And we, and you, you remind them of, um, what, what good things are there. Like it's okay to feel all of these things, but then also let, let's point out the other side that we also have we're together, you know, whatever blessings or benefits you can remind them of. So, so it gets to, he says, you know, we've started doing family prayer and that seems to be helpful. Mm -hmm. That's a a great example of something that's ritualistic, that is uniting, that is, and, and, and the core. So if you're not a religious person, it doesn't have to be that, but the core of it might be the same, which is maybe expressing some gratitude or feeling like you have some higher power to rely on mm-hmm. for safety. So if you think of what that actually translates to. Mm-hmm. And so if you're not religious, it may be that you have a ritual where you're connecting. I highly recommend over dinner. And it's expressing something you're grateful for. Mm-hmm. Um, talking about all the good things that you have and that we can st- we can hold two things at once. We can hold the feeling of we're very lucky, we're, we're healthy, or you know whatever your thing is that you've got going on that's good. And we can also be very sad for others um, and be scared that it's possible to feel all those things at once, which guess what's happening, whether we can acknowledge it or not. All mm-hmm. those things are happening at once. Yeah. Um, but to give some of the positive um, steadying things, um, some some energy, as well as acknowledging that the unsteadying things are there and it's okay that, that we're experiencing them, um, th- there's permission to feel scared, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And and maybe the adults in this story and all of the adults in all of our stories, w- we have a hard time with that maybe generally because we are the ones in charge, right? Um, we don't have our own mother or father to be like, we got this, you guys just go play in the backyard. Mm-hmm. We are those people now. Yeah. Um, and so to, to really make sure you are okay, which piggybacks a little bit on what we talked about last week mm-hmm. of when one of your partners, one of the partners isn't doing so well, right? Or both heaven forbid, right? right? That you're you're really struggling. That acknowledgement that things are really hard and that your usual s- strategies aren't working um, is actually more healthy for you than to think that you can keep doing what you've always done and that it'll work. Um, that acknowledgement's important and, and then moving towards what what skills do I need? What breaks do I need to take? How can I care for myself so that I am, you know, there and in regular circumstances maybe you didn't need any of that and i think a lot of people have thought well i've I've always been mentally strong you know i'm fine and then the reality of this is nobody nobody's okay yeah (laughs) like like nobody even if they say they are they just they yeah even when they say they they are they've got this all under control i don't you know it's just not true like it's just everybody has to deal with it and sure surely everybody deals with it in different degrees but there's no way you're not affected by this. I mean, unless you're not human, I guess. Dogs don't care. My dogs don't care. But even they can tell when something's wrong, you know. Mm-hmm. They can tell when their yeah, owner's oh, yeah. being weird. One, okay, no, they get clingy when they sense that uh, oh, yeah. that you're upset or, or not doing well with yeah. something. And it may just be out of motivation that they hope it's not them. But still, <laughs> you know. Or, or it's like, oh, my God, if they're too sad, will they be able to feed me? Oh, no. <laughs> right. Yeah, they've got their, – their, their needs seem to be a little more narrow. But – um. One thing, yeah, I you tell me if this is wrong headed, but it feels like one thing that's maybe easy to do is to say, you know, I don't know. You're, you're, let's say you've, you, that you're in a place that's relatively untouched by this. Uh, you're still doing your part to to be safe and and do the things you need to to help your community, but mostly you're okay. You're financially okay. You're um, you're okay in all those you know sort of world need ways, but 
your kids having nightmares and it's because of some of this added stress that they're picking up. It seems like the last thing you'd want to do is say, well, if, you know, Anne Frank can stay trapped in a attic for 12 <laughs> weeks, then you can deal with, you know what I mean? Like there's probably yeah. some tendency for some to want them just to say, rub some dirt on it and you'll be fine. Um, yeah. mine was, all, well, I can just say what I did with my kids. When my kids were like this and Taylor was having her night terrors and things like that, it would be to do the opposite, to try to zoom way in and, and get down on their level, even physically, like just mm-hmm. kneel way down. So you're eye to eye and, and like, and, you know, make sure they knew that you are their safety net here, that you are okay right in this second and you're fine and that, I'm here, so don't worry. Let's talk about it. Like, if that feels like the way you're supposed to do it, was I doing? Was I trying to do that right, or was, or should I have said things like, "Ah, your grandpa went through the Great Depression. This is nothing." You know, like what? How should? <laughs> which one is and the right grandpa one? Grandpa never spoke of his feelings again. Yeah, yeah that's no. true. <laughs> um, no, no, no. Yeah, yeah. You're exactly right. And I, in fact, it 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 it's, gives a nice visual to it actually with the monster under the bed, right? Like, so maybe it's that the two of you crawl under your bed with a, with a flashlight Mm -hmm. and you put your damn phone away, Mm -hmm. everyone, Mm -hmm. by the way, and you just are present and you, you curl up in a, um, oh my gosh, what's the English word? So weird. Curl up in a a Swedish ball, curl up in a ball, curl up in a, no, no, not a ball. Oh, like a present being being aware being, oh my gosh, I love this, that I cannot think of this stupid, Curl a up tent? like you make yourself a fort. A fort. a fort. Okay. Man, you were in Sweden for too long. They don't have a good fort word over there. You gotta. They have a great fort word. Oh. It's called koya. It's oh. perfect. Yeah, she just couldn't remember the American equivalent. I couldn't remember the English word. Um, and it's the idea of like you you get into a small space with them and you are laying down. You're not you don't have to stare them in the eyeballs. Like, but you're it's just a relaxed. You are there's like a, a pseudo safeness to that. That's why, that's why you build a fort. Right. Mm-hmm. And, um, and there's this element of you are just fully present and open and you're not, you don't actually have to be the parent in that moment. You just have to be a human mm. and see the other person, which is your kid, which you usually see, don't see as human. Really, honestly, we can't because we, <laughs> they would turn into horrible th- people if we thought of them as only humans. Right. We have right. to, we got to train them. They're puppies or whatever. But this idea where you're just really giving them some of your your relaxed energy and you're not doing a thousand things and you are not distracted and you are – that's what kids need anyway. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And I think we have a tendency, and we could probably look at the data on phone usage is up by a billion percent. Um, and so there is a, there's a distractedness and a, I am somewhere else. And that that alone, right? To switching a little of that energy, even if you timed yourself and gave it an appointment every day to be with that kid in a fort. Um, and that's reading books at night have always served that purpose, but maybe there's a little more to it than that for a particular child. Some kids seem to be like, oh, it's fine. And then others just maybe need a little more of that um, relaxed energy from a parent. Now, I say that being a parent with zero relaxed energy at the moment. Like I know <laughs> mm-hmm. what I'm telling you mm-hmm. is nearly impossible, Yeah, <laughs> but it is good for you too. Right. Mm-hmm. So I have had to force myself to do this thing I'm advising you to do right now, which is, um, I, m- at this point, all of my clients are now not doing okay. Like everyone did pretty good for about six weeks and it's, it, it's, rough and Mm. my schedule just got twice as busy Mm. and at the same point my kids schedule is winding down at school and summer summer with nothing to do is starting so it's gonna not be very fun (laughs) so i have done this thing where i have carved out every single day no matter what i go out on the hammock with my two youngest boys and i read them a book Mm -hmm. and it's kind of a scary book (laughs) i didn't know it was but there's something about actually using scary for scary that has some benefit, right? Mm-hmm. Like we can talk about how freaky that thing is. Um, and it can kind of almost be a pseudonym or, you know, a, uh, whatever pr- proxy for other things are scary. Right. Yeah. And then, you know, we can talk about what do you think that is? Or, Ooh, how does Corona connect to that? So it, it's weird how I didn't, we didn't pick the book up for that reason, but it's had that added benefit. It's like me. I watched 28 weeks later recently, which is all about a giant virus turning everyone into rage zombies. And, um, 
Yeah, I find that cathartic. I find that chill, chilling me out. It's weird. It's, I don't know it's why. It's almost like immersion, almost like immersion therapy yeah. for, yeah. for the pandemic. It's really <laughs> weird. I don't know why I feel that way about it, but I do. And I'm glad to hear that that's, I mean, obviously a, b- a book and your kids in a hammock is a different thing than me watching a bunch of zombies devour each other, but you know, totally different. Yeah. Same idea. Yeah. Same, <laughs> well, and, same idea. and again, going back to like what, what a kid needs, every mm-hmm. kid is a little bit different, right? Mm-hmm. So if your kid needs to move their body more and we are all moving significantly less, it's, it's, if you're, you know, if you count it, you're, unless you're walking on purpose, which I think a lot of people are doing more of obviously. Right. But, right. um, yeah, your kids are maybe not getting that if that, that's specifically what a kid needs to feel good. Or maybe it's that, um, some rituals got ended or you're working more hours and that's t- tougher. I mean, this is the hardest time to parent. I would say maybe since world war two, I don't know. Like when other time has it been, hmm has there ever been a version of this where, you know, maybe we're a little bit ill-equipped and I mean, you're always ill-equipped parent. That's just real. But you know, your stress level has zoomed up while you're trying to help the, your mental well at least at least on this scale right because there's there's plenty yeah. of like pocket examples of, of, well, of course. people having to deal with a major disaster or you know but whether it be something like 911 or something like a hurricane in the in the south or something like you have these micro examples of of families in pockets having to deal with things and that uh, here and around the world I don't want to just talk about the US obviously but um you know and they're war torn countries where this is every day and like, there's no such thing as normal for them, or there's no such thing as what we think of as normal. So, but, th- but this is like a weirdly, I wish it was more unifying, but a weirdly, sh- you know, universally shared experience yeah. uh, for the whole planet. Like everybody's got to deal with it. And that's that you're right. That's super unusual. Not, not since a world war has that probably been, you know, the case. Right. And even then, I mean, I don't know if like, in the southern tip of Chile during World War II, you were quite as, you know what I'm saying? Whereas every single tip of every single country yeah, it's, is it's, all aware of this. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's very, very interesting. Um, So going back to this, the adult energy impact on a kid, this is just true, right? So when I, when I meet with people later in their lives and I ask them about their childhoods and often they'll have specific memories, sometimes they won't, but for the most part, what they remember is how it felt. Mm-hmm. And I think, you know, you ask yourself that, like, how did it feel? Did you feel safe? Did you feel, you know, was it boring? <laughs> like, whatever. Like, what were your feelings? Mm-hmm. And because that's, that's again, like, kids are hilarious and they'll remember what they want to remember. I asked uh, my kids what they remembered about Sweden the other day because it feels like it's just fading and it makes me want to cry. Mm-hmm. And the kids are like, the stories they told were bizarre. And like, I was shocked. It's like, that's what, like, what? <laughs> it was so weird. And yeah. I'm like, I need to show you pictures so we can get your memories back on track with the right oh, So It wasn't just that they remembered different things than you would have thought they would remember. They were remembering things wrong. Mm. Yeah, it was like, <laughs> and I don't know. Well, maybe it was the context because it was Mother's Day. And, mm. and Adam was sort of like, let's talk. Oh, some of your best memories of mom and and then like what memories you have from sweden with mom and they maybe it was terrible in sweden i don't know but it was two of them where <laughs> pete was like remember that time you really hurt my ankle on the bike <laughs> i was like oh, yeah. <laughs> and then elliot's I'll like never forget when, that. <laughs> elliot's like remember when i cut my head open um and well dad was there for me I was like, oh. wow that's amazing and then he goes, I mean, you were there later. I was like, can we not do this? On yeah, Monday? why are we doing this on yeah. Mother's Day? It was hilarious. Anyway, but it was, and then Abe's were very sweet, of course. But, you know, they're little kids. So they say this time where, you know, you helped me was a time they were hurt. So I mm-hmm. get what they were doing. But I was like, oh, I'm going to show you pictures where I took you in the forest and I was magical mother. Mm-hmm. Come on. You guys got to remember this. And it's because it's hard, right? Memory is a weird thing. But this is our kids' childhood right now, mm-hmm. right? And so I think sometimes, I, you know, parents are grumpy. When you were a kid, do you remember parents being grumpy? Or do you remember them being stressed? Kind of, but like, you're also pretty oblivious. Yeah, you kind of got your own thing going 20, on, yeah. Well, 24 hours in your house during a pandemic, this is 
it's hard for them to be as oblivious, you yeah, know? Yeah. So a little bit of self-care goes a long way, but also, you know, what does the version of just getting on the floor with them and having no expectations and you, you're going to create safety just by doing that. So Scott, I do think your approach is right. And I think, um, everyone has a different relationship with their kid. So it's a, it's a nice time to experiment a little bit with, if that seems really weird to you, like, I'm not going to get on the floor, and climb under their bed with a flashlight. Right. Are you kidding? <laughs> maybe that's a sign you should try that. <laughs> yeah. I was going to say, uh, you may, maybe that's one to try. And it's actually, I don't know, just let them know you're in this with them and you're all together and, just the last thing you want to do is create a feeling of separation while together. Like Mm -hmm. that's the worst. Like I've been thinking about this with Kim and you know, she's, I'm a pretty, I'm a homebody. I don't, I don't need to be constantly out and around and you know, at social things. I get up, I get most of my social crap right here. Like I talk Mm -hmm. to all my friends every day. I talk to tons of people online every day. By the end of the day, I'm socialed out. I'm like, Oh, I've talked to everyone today. I don't want to talk to anyone anymore. And Kim's like, we should go. Well, now we can't really do that. (laughs) And so she's having a, you know, a special kind of withdrawal from society that I'm not having. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so I'm trying to be more sensitive to that and understand it and not just accept that, that, you know, that it should be easy for her or whatever. Just try that. I'll try that while other people try the other thing. And let's see if we can't make a difference. All right. Because, you know, Kim can't. She made jambalaya yesterday and it was amazing. But part of the reason she did is because she's trying to keep busy cooking. And part of the reason she's trying to keep busy cooking is because she's trying to keep busy not having her mind on how disrupted her life is right now. Right. So don't just, I guess what I'm saying to myself, I'm saying this to me, don't take advantage of the fact that you got some awesome jambalaya upstairs to heat up for lunch today. Like maybe make sure I'm giving as much as I can back because, you know, that's that's a pretty heavy deal that she's doing every day and she's dealing with it the best way she can, but maybe I need to be more sensitive to it. Think of that stuff, you know? Yeah, especially if you have a lifestyle that, like, or or there's lots of good things happening for you, like you own Zoom or something. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, you, like, recognizing that everyone's got their own experience of this. So so this happened the other day. My friend's a dentist, and he is um, a, a – this is my favorite store in all of Minnesota – it is a hardware store, and wait for it. Here's the name. Are you ready? Mm-hmm. Menards. <laughs> yeah, Menards. Oh, Menards. I've heard of Menards. Yeah. 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 Fine, Ma- you've heard of it, but seriously, I'd never heard of it, and I could it would not be, stop laughing. And it would be an even funnier name if it was M apostrophe Nards. <laughs> like, oh, Menards. Menards. <laughs> but you have to say it like that. You say yeah, it you like do, it. Totally so. do, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Menards. And yeah. they have not changed the interior of a store since 1964. It's amazing. Anyway, I love the store. And my friends really trying to support them because they really are doing a lot of good things for their employees. And, you know, you, you want to really respect and patron places that are um, being good to people right mm-hmm. now, you know. Mm-hmm. So he's walking to the front and they require a mask to go in and their, their employees are cleaning constantly and wearing masks and, you know, and they're stressed out and you know, they've been open this whole time. Mm -hmm. They are exhausted. You can see it in their faces because you know what everyone does is they start painting their houses. So they've been very, very busy. Anyway, (laughs) they're walking in and there's a a guy with his two kids and you can't take kids into that store. You have to be 16 Mm. um, at this point. And these are, you know, like a 10 and eight year old or something. And for their safety and then they're spreading and the just less bodies in there and, you know, all all the reasons that you would do it. And anyway, so this guy walking to the front and they're selling masks right at the door if you don't have one for a dollar. And he's got, I mean, my friend said, I watched him puff his chest up like this. He's coming here to fight. That's the whole point. Yeah. And he's going to, he's going to drag his two kids. Not sure why. No. But anyway, um, so he gets up to the front and he just starts doing his like, I have a right. It's like you have a right to go to any store you want. It's called Home Depot, and they're not going to make you wear a mask. So bye. Yeah, goodbye. <laughs> you yeah, know yeah. that. And first of all, shopping is not the right is not a civil right, and picking a particular store. So also, also, uh, oh my gosh, I won't even get started. I'm so mad. <laughs> okay, don't get started. But let me just yeah. tell you again what happened. Okay, so they're walking up. He's puffing up. He's ready to fight, and there's just a little guy at the door is like. You gotta wear a mask, and he's just like, "Oh, I'm talking to your manager," and the manager just 
a half inch away is like, I'm the manager. Yeah. And he just talked very calmly and kind of explained the guy was just ticked and his kids are just so mortified as you would be. And there's just a bit of like, think this through for one minute. I understand you are frustrated. You don't want to be told what to do. We get that. Mm -hmm. You're you're probably financially affected by this. Mm -hmm. It's inconvenient. It's uncomfortable. It's all of the things. We get it. Um, but there are your two kids are now watching you treat other people really badly right. and scream about your civil rights. Like, I'm sorry, but it's not been since the British that you've had a problem. Right? You're a white dude. Sorry. I just have no sympathy <laughs> for that. Yeah. And so you're you're training your kids to think other people are being are their enemies. Mm-hmm. When and and Daniel Levy, you know, the guy from Shits Creek, I love him. Yeah, he's um great. he had a great post or video I could watch him. He talks about a way to reframe this because it's the truth. It's the true reframing of this, which is the mask is not it's not some symbol of anything. It's a symbol of of any political thing. It's a symbol of kindness. You're extending some kindness to Mm -hmm. lots of people who will be very, very ill and die. You're extending kindness to the people who work there, Mm -hmm. who Mm -hmm. this is their life now is to have crazy, angry people threaten that. Like it's like, can we reframe this as kindness? And I, I mean, good luck, dude, but also don't do it in front of kids. uh, I know using your kid. That's basically mm-hmm. like using your kids as shields, and I'm not a fan. Like you, you do. You brought the, your kids in there for a reason, and it was to amplify the. Right. F- you're you're trying to make that manager feel even worse that he has to enforce this because now you got your kids there. Oh, when people use their kids in that way, dude. Oh, it just fries me. Just fries me. Fries my bacon. I know. Oh, good job. The, I hope you're happy, Wendy. Yeah, you made well, me mad. The, sorry to fry your bacon. Because the opposite, and the guy left, <laughs> but because the opposite would be so easy to do, which mm-hmm. is, hey, kids, look at, we're going to respect all these other people. This is something they need. We may not think it matters, and that's okay. We can think what we want. It's yeah. free country, but it's not a free country to go into a Menards <laughs> and make everyone else feel unsafe and scared. And yeah threatened because the reality is there are people who cannot get this virus or they're gone it's also are, it's also it's also it, private it property it's freaking private property I know. they can do whatever I know. they want they could say i'm sorry <laughs> sir you can't come in here unless you wear a dunce cap and your butt flap is open <laughs> <laughs> they can do that that's their prerogative and totally you can shut right. yeah have my butt flap shut. <laughs> um Pandemic yeah, no, or not, okay. it's just not there. It's just that's where it ends. And I don't know why people I think it doesn't. I, I didn't mean to light a fire under you, but Ugh. but the the reframe is the powerful one, right? Which is really if you ask a good citizen of the United States, a patriot, probably a Christian, to say, you know what, can you do an act of kindness today? Mm-hmm. And that because it is. It is to your neighbor, it is to somebody else. At least right now it is. And even if Oh, it's all a hoax. None of it's real. Okay. Well, are you really still being, can you be kind to the people who no, they are all under this delusion, the whole world? Can you just try it? Like mm-hmm. anyway, that idea though, of just here's, here's what you can do to be kind. And here's what you can do to your children to mm-hmm. be kind. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Is you're going to make the world a way better place for them and everyone else. If you can model and that's, sorry, taking it full circle, getting away from face masks. Um, it is modeling to them your children's self-care, modeling to them that it's okay to have feelings. Uh, it's not okay to hurt other people with those feelings. That is the greatest gift we can give kids is that they're allowed to feel it. You're allowed to feel for afraid. You're allowed to feel annoyed. You're fa- uh, allowed to feel persecuted even if you'd like to feel that. And it, you're allowed to feel paranoid. You're allowed, you're, you can feel it all then what do you do with that? Mm-hmm. Um, in the civil society, we have to figure that out. We have laws and rules because there are some folks who cannot figure that out. Um, and here, here's the, the test, I think. And I think this is what's happening sort of overall for people is it's kind of like a, a refiner's fire a little bit. It's this also a good time, good time to remind everybody, though, that it is limited cases by its nature like this is a rare occurrence it's happening more right now but it's a rare occurrence for people to be this big of a jackass 
And the only reason you're all hearing about it is because you got phones and you got Instagram and you're following the mm. worst Karens ever account on Instagram, uh, which exists, True. by the way, that exists. And so you're getting an amplified version of this. So I just want to, the reason I bring that up is I just want people to understand that these can be great examples of what not to be like. Don't be Karen. Don't be Dave or whatever we're going to call it. Chad, did we decide Chad, yesterday? Whatever Chad, it is. Chad, I think was the, you know, was the equivalent. I um, thought it was Kevin. Was it Kevin? It might oh, be Kevin. I, that's right. There were Kevins too. Yeah. I just know too many people named Kevin and Chad who are nice, and so I can't stand doing it. But yeah. um, and I don't even like the Karen things. I know a couple of nice Karens. But the point is, like, see these as, as the examples that they are, as bad examples. Don't do them. Uh, and know that it's also... It's a minority of people, and they're getting a lot of, you know, they're getting a lot of a buzz for it because it's 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 abhorrent behavior, just like any other abhorrent behavior. You're going to hear about it, so just I'm just saying, don't let it get you down too much. Mm -hmm. It makes me really angry, but I also know I need to not get let it get to me too far because at the end of the day, it's not that many people, really. It's it's too many. One is too many, but you know what I mean. Like we're just hearing so much about it. And it's True. Hard. And also you hear hearing this Menard story brought to you by a eyewitness with zero phones. No one recorded anything. Right. You'll never know that that he swallowed his whatever and walked away and the manager felt good. And the, the eight people standing there were ready to help, you yeah. know, like, right. you don't you don't actually get footage of, you know, it, it being fine. Either, yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. I'll tell or you what would happen if I was there. And this is why I need not to be there when one of these things go down. I am not kidding you. <laughs> I am in the mood for a fight lately anyway. You're just asking for me to go down. Like I'm yeah. ready to do it. I'm ready to throw down and, and I'm ready to fight. About it. That's everybody on some level, right? We're, yeah. all, we're all a bunch of triggers just waiting to be pulled uh -huh. yeah. That is so true. More so than probably any other time. Like I, I have a client who's trapped in a country and she can't get to her own country. And when she gets there, she has to go into a military quarantine, which is not a good thing in the country I'm describing. Anyway, it's t it's terrifying. She's terrified. And she said she she went into the kitchen in the night. She heard a noise and there was a rat in the sink because oh. she's just in a temporary rental just to stay in the place she's at. Right. Yeah. And she said she just about lost it in the karate chop <laughs> and rat like now that would be alarming <laughs> at any point, but yeah. with the level that we're at, it's, this is why people really need to be careful with their behavior and what they're like this, that goes back to that self care thing and taking the edge off yourself, not taking it out on other people. So Scott, mm. you cannot go anywhere. I know, I know. <laughs> and I know I say this and I would probably think twice, but if somebody really got belligerent with somebody, like somebody picking on I have it all in my head. It's some guy. It's a guy with just a dumb muscle shirt on. He's 55. He's got <laughs> tattoos that are sagging beyond belief. He's no longer the cool dude he thinks he is, but he's this big dude that's always been able to get what he wants because he's bigger than everybody else. And I picture him talking down to his little short lady working at the Walmart or wherever, probably Target because Walmart's not being that picky. And, uh, and he's yelling at her and saying, well, I'm coming in because my rights say I can. My rights don't end where your feelings start or something like that. And then it'll just be it. I'll be done. I'll pop <laughs> off and I'm going to be on the news or something because I'll be so <laughs> pissed. be in the hospital by the way you've described this guy. Yeah, yeah. you will be I don't. Ca I don't even care, dude. I would be so mad. I would shove that dude down yeah. and I would look like a berserk freak nut. He would be – and the thing is he'd be as – he's as tall as me in my vision, right? He may be a little, he may be a little also, bulkier. Also, you've got a good mask that's secure because during the scuffle, that thing can't come off. No, I know. I, and I'll, you know what? I'll wear Brian's uh, Immortan Joe mask or something just there to look go. scary. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> He'll stay away from you if, you, if you're wearing this. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm thinking. So anyway, I just, I don't know why. I, uh, I know everyone else was Can this I way too. I apologize to all me. the listeners that this was not my intention to drag us here uh, to this moment. Um, <laughs> Where you so find out how, make, what makes Scott violent. We finally found out what make, it is. Make a koya or a fort uh, with your child. Get a flashlight. Camp in your backyard. Cl climb under the bed. Do something on their level and just connect and it's okay. And you're doing a good job. Here's the thing. All of us are doing the best we can, right? Yeah. I mean, we are. Because this is it. This is the best we got. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and some days suck. Some days are way worse than others. Some days are better. Um, this is it, It's incredibly difficult for everybody. So you know, figure out what you need and try to get it. I, I know a lot of people are describing just the feeling of trapped. Maybe it's in a relationship that they thought they would be able to get out of, or maybe it's 
a dynamic that, you know, it's like a freezing in time of some really tough stuff. But we, we have more resources than we think. And a, a big one is ourselves, mm -hmm. right? Is, mm -hmm. But if we, if we don't tap into that or take care of that at all, we don't have it. So for someone that's exercising more, for someone else, it's eating better. For someone, for everyone, 100% of us, it's sleeping better, yeah. right? So there's, there's so many really basic things we can be doing that are going to improve our chances of being capable of doing the stuff that's required of us right now, which is beyond what we normally can can handle you know in some ways my sleeping habits are a lot like this like a little kids because i'm not getting sleep and having crazy dreams and i don't know why like there's that feeling of i don't know why i'm having this dream or why i'm up at three or whatever and this all started yeah. when the pandemic started well a lot of it is you know i'm i'm confident during my day i'm doing what i'm supposed to do doing the best we can making it through whatever but your brain has to deal with some of that existential stuff in some way and, and for me i think it's in sleep i think it's just yeah that's where it's coming out. So I, I feel for this kid with the nightmares. If, if in a way I kind of envy it because kids have a raw way of just getting it out. They wake up and they cry and they and they're upset. And, they're and, it's, and it's been dealt with, you know. Yeah, you kind of deal with it for the most part exactly. And I feel like I'm sort of just packing it away, and I don't even really know I'm packing it away. It's I don't know. It's weird. And you've had a lifetime of having weird dreams, and you 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 manage it in the way you manage it, but a kid doesn't. And and here's where that tendency to soothe the kid again is like. You don't want them to be doing that. You you already need your sleep. So your kid wakes up screaming at 3 a.m. Like this is it, it. It's not in a vacuum. It's in the context of your 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 family system. Mm -hmm. So it is you're really motivated for them to stop. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But the worst way is to try to force it to stop or convince them to stop or, you know, get angry at them because they're not stopping. It's the the back door has to be used, which is the is softness. It's OK. Let's talk about it. If it happens again, it's fine. Mommy's happy to wake up. No, I'm not. You don't threaten them to stop. That's what you're yeah. saying. Yeah, yeah. Because you, what you're doing is pushing down even further the feelings that then show up in the in the night. You know, mm -hmm. so so it's literally like giving them a a pass to freely experience whatever they're feeling. And so then at night, their subconscious doesn't need to download a nightmare scenario. It's it's downloading other experiences and. You know, it's not like it's this cut and dry, but it really does help over the long run. And and a lot of times people are having nightmares because of unresolved grief or unresolved other things that are that are showing up because right now they're too busy and or they're, you know, too bored or their sleep so jacked up. They are the stuff is coming out when it hadn't been coming out before. So right. that's mainly for the adults out there, probably for some kids, too, because unresolved guilt is pretty or guilt. Sorry. Unresolved grief is pretty common. Um, and things that you, you feel you need closure on, they're going to show up in your dreams. So, yeah. well, there, there you go. go. I think we've solved it finally. The world can yeah. rest easy and take a deep breath. And also, it. wearing a mask is a, is a kindness. Just think of it, it's being kind. Yeah, I would actually recommend looking at that Daniel Levy video. I watched it yesterday, retweeted it. It's very nice. I know we don't always like to hear our quote unquote celebrities tell us what to do or how to be or, you know, kind of whatever. Uh, tell us the virtues of how they're they're living their lives or whatever but this this came off as extremely genuine and smart and he seems like a really smart guy anyway so yeah i'm take I, he's he's pretty great so go check it out yeah. uh all right wendy all right. any yeah. other things we should mention anything people should be checking out or going to or looking at uh yeah sign up for real st steps we're gonna do it in august mm -hmm. and uh, we are revamping lots of things it's gonna be fun we're gonna do some i don't want to give too much away but some therapeutic intervention we have not done before <laughs> so it's gonna be well, yeah it's gonna be fun in fact um ellen and i are doing it ourselves mm -hmm. in the month of may mm -hmm. so we can like actually see how oh you're going through it. it yourselves meaning yeah. oh okay yeah. that's cool and that's then awesome. we have her husband's also doing it so he's giving us all sorts of feedback uh about like uh da, guys that doesn't make sense or whatever um but we're doing it all the workouts all the eating all the Sleep is a sleeping. I'm fighting for the sleep. That's not working very well. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, we're doing all the good stuff. So it, it'll be fun. So the, the next run in August is going to be um, different in a lot of ways, but really still a lot of good stuff. So we're very excited. nice. So, By so the way, even if you just sign up for the email list, you'll get more information. I noticed, that real I, know, I noticed Elena is uh, using a different photo. She's drinking some sort of uh, grass drink. Yeah. There. I changed it. I, she, I was like, <laughs> she was. 
<laughs> pregnant with her third kid in like 2000, whatever, when that picture was taken. Yeah. So I was like, update it. Time so update. here's her drinking her green smoothie. Yeah, there you go. That's what you do when you're a nutritionist. Yeah, she's a, <laughs> she's a healthy one. All right, go check out yeah. the sites, wheelsteps.org. Sign up, be a part of it. Wendy, have a great week, and we'll see you next time. Thanks, Thanks guys. Wendy. Bye. Bye. Good one today. Good one today. I think it went well. Yes. All I right. think so, too. I like this. I mean, it applies, applies to all of us who are probably having a hard time sleeping. Yeah. My sleep is horrendous right now. It's uh, It was bad last night, actually. had the best night of sleep um, I've had in a while. Well, so banging, it, banging your head against uh, a boss in World of Warcraft, sometimes it works in Maybe your favor. Maybe that's it. Maybe it was Nazoth, yeah. Never know. Mm-hmm. Uh, all right. It's supposed to be nightmares of Nazoth, not good dreams of Nazoth. <laughs> well, I didn't say I had good dreams. I just said I slept. Oh, okay. That's, it's a step, Brian. It's a step. Uh, a couple quick things. Jen wrote in and said, uh, special birthday shout out for her boyfriend. Hey, guys. Uh, she says this. My boyfriend is turning 31 tomorrow. This was yesterday, so today, 521. And I was hoping to get him a shout out. His name is Aaron, and he's been listening since day one. Unfortunately, the pandemic or during the pandemic, we had to cancel our trip to Japan this week and can't celebrate the way we want. Last year, wow. Scott helped me by drawing a picture of him and his dog in a similar fashion. I wanted to give him another frog pants style gift in the form of a shout out. So we're giving it to you now, Aaron. Aww. Happy birthday, dude. Happy birthday, Aaron. Thanks for listening all this time. You got a you got a very special uh, girlfriend who who cares about you and uh knows what you like and uh was kind of cheap, but still uh <laughs> with the thought that counts. Wow. So. You know I just realized he would have been 20 <laughs> if he's been here since the beginning, he was like 21 when he started. Or yeah, 20, no 20 not quite 20. It would be 22 when he started. Or 20, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's crazy. Anyway. No, I'm kidding. You, you kids. Jen and Aaron, you crazy kids. You crazy Thanks kids. Thanks for writing in. Uh, here's another one from uh, Audie, who wrote in. So says, hey, Scott and Brian. Audie's a great artist, and I'm glad he wrote this because yeah. he says he's been meaning to do this since we started telling fellow tadpoolers uh, that we're going to uh, pimp their stuff, talk about their cool work. So even before the pandemic, uh, last year I transitioned to a freelance illustrator. So if any tadpoolers out there need any artwork, let me know. I've been worked, sorry, I've already worked slash am working on uh, some with others, but we'll be happy to add some more to my workload. Working from home is what he's saying. Yeah, basically that. Uh, I specialize in more comic type (laughs) art, uh, doing family portraits of any kind of character illustration, a few podcast album cover arts, and anything else. Lastly, I've been doing family slash social crests, logos for those like me who suddenly became teachers at home. If you need something, check out my Twitter account at oddly normal one at oddly normal one is the name or Instagram at Audie underscore Norman. That's a U D I E underscore Norman uh, for examples of his work. He's very good, by the way. He has done almost, I don't know how many now, tons of artwork for the there will be dungeons stuff that we do. And he just does fan art for it. And it's amazing. Some of the best work we've seen. Super talented. Really, really good. So uh, do check him out. He also has an Etsy store at Audi Doodles, uh, if you prefer to go through Etsy. Um, And he says he prefers direct requests and communication. If you want to do that, audi.norman at gmail.com. Anyway, uh, there you go, Audi. Wanted to give you a shout out and uh, hope people check out your, your stuff. It's very, very good. All right. Brian? Awesome. Yes, sir. We're done. Okay. Uh, frogpants.com slash TMS for everything you might need. Uh, we are supported by you at patreon.com slash TMS. Tomorrow you get a free episode of the show, a fifth episode of the week. It's called TMS PM. You don't get it any other way unless you're a patron. So join up and get it. You can get it at any level. That's tomorrow at 3.30 Mountain Time. I think Dan will be with us. Uh, should be a good time. So check that out. That's patreon.com slash TMS. Okay, song and a cheesecake. Let's do it. Let's get out. Oh, cheesecake. Yeah. We didn't say anything about cheesecake. Mm. Awesome. <laughs> it's sitting on your doorstep. Enjoy. <laughs> uh, Jennifer Blatt wrote in. Uh, another Jen wrote in and said, my boyfriend Andy Smith loves your show. Could be the same Jen. Could have two boyfriends. Yeah. So Aaron and Andy. Yeah. Uh, my boyfriend Andy Smith loves your show on May 22nd is his birthday. Oh, that proves it's a different person. Uh, we uh, He went to the Vegas meetup last year and was planning to go this year as well. If you could play this song or give him a birthday shout out, it would make